Okay. So big topic that uh, we're going to go through tonight is making fitness fun for individuals with Down syndrome, because if you're anything like a lot of the parents and uh, families that I talk to, anytime exercise comes up, uh, there can be some negative emotions around this, you know, complaining, it's hard, um, and a lot of concerns, I think, in our community about health and, and fitness. And so I am very excited to bring some tips, some tricks, and especially connect people in the community who are doing so well at this so that you can walk out of here feeling really supported. So just a quick introduction to me. I am Megan Lavasi. I am the health and wellness director of the YMCA of Memphis and the Mid-South. And my background, I've got, done a lot of different things in health and fitness over the last 20 years. Um, I'm a certified personal trainer. I am a certified health coach. Um, certified yoga instructor. I was a teacher for a long time until I became mom and then decided I wanted to be with kids only part of my day. <laughs> um, but I taught for a really long time and um, I'm now on the board for the DSAM. And this, most importantly, I think all of my training and everything really came into uh, bringing me here today when Samuel was born. He's seven years old. He's my oldest and um, has really taught me so much about uh, fitness and looking at fitness from a different lens than what we normally think of. And you'll hear some of that in, in the talk tonight. But uh, just know wherever you are on your journey, whoever it is that you are here for tonight, whether it's a child, um, a loved one, uh, I can definitely relate to that. And a, a big part of my heart here is keeping him healthy and active uh, because I know how important it is. So that's a little bit about me. Um, some goals for this presentation. I want you to walk out of this time understanding why making fitness fun is really the most important piece of the puzzle when it comes to um, the health and, and fitness, that there's all sorts of things that we're going to look at tonight that go into that fitness puzzle. But all of that, we can have all the right things. And if it's not fun, um, you're going to always come up against this, this roadblock with our kids and really anybody. I want to just qualify that. Like what I'm teaching is important for individuals with Down syndrome, but I find across the board, if you also are a person who doesn't really enjoy fitness, this is also going to make a big difference for you. Um, but especially, especially for our loved ones with Down syndrome. So we're going to understand the why behind this and then the how and what, what can we actually do to make this more fun, more enjoyable, get them more motivated to be um, an active participant in health and fitness, and then find these opportunities in our community. If you want to get started on this right now, it's a great time. There's a lot of people doing amazing things and we'll help connect you to them. So here's what we know about exercise and the impacts and, and the improvements that come along with regular physical activity. It, this is a list of 13, but honestly, I could have filled up like 15 slides. I kept it to the ones that I felt were most relevant. But regular physical activity improves cognitive abilities, brain function. Uh, it improves our energy. It improves mood. How many of you know uh, some individuals with Down syndrome that need help with those, right? Heart function, sleep, hormone balance, confidence, such a big one, uh, blood pressure, improves cholesterol, digestion, weight management, joint health, and insulin resistance and, and diabetes. These are the, some of the big ones that I wanted to just help you see that this is equal parts um, brain and body. And so when we look at fitness for individuals with Down syndrome, I mean, so many on this list, you can just look and kind of check off what are some things that you are dealing with right now. So we know this is important. We know it's super important. But one of the things that I hear all the time when I talk to people about fitness is this connection that's just like cemented in our brains that, um, you know, I need to get my child or my brother or my loved one to exercise more because they have to lose weight. And I want, I want you to know that exercise is 
really not just about weight loss. It does help with that. And it is a part of the puzzle. But if, if you take nothing else out of this, just know that exercise and the importance of this for individuals with Down syndrome is really not just about weight loss. Our brain, our body, uh, we are made for movement. Our DNA, whether we have an extra chromosome or not, um, thrives. We we thrive with movement. And when this is absent, we suffer mentally and physically in a lot of different ways. And individuals with Down syndrome are no different and really need our help to work through their limitations and give them the gift of fitness by making it fun. And continuing to talk about weight loss and and those physical things can really bring a damper on that. So you're going to learn and hear a little bit about how do we shift away from that being the focus and turn it into something different. And I wanted to drop this in here because this is one of the most fabulous books that I ever read that helped me understand for my son, Samuel, how important exercise was for him. This is a book called Spark, and it is um, looking at the science of exercise in our brain. And for individuals with Down syndrome, this is even more important, right? All of us get this brain benefit and improved cognitive ability like concentration and creativity and problem solving. Um, and there's there's tons of research in this book about struggling readers, people who are struggling with mathematics, that when exercise is brought into the equation, um, it literally lights up our, our brain function so that we can do more with, uh, with our regular cognitive ability within our genetics. So if you're curious to learn a little bit more about the why behind this, um, definitely check this book out because uh, you will you will be blown away by some of the research that has been done uh, to, to show this connection. But I know that there are some very significant limitations, right? When we think about um, exercise and, and why this is something that comes up with a lot of resistance when we work with some individuals with Down syndrome, there are some big things that make this more difficult or can make this more difficult for them. And so I wanna just take a second, I'm not gonna go into this a ton, just so you understand if you are trying to get somebody with Down syndrome moving, get your loved one out and, and they're complaining about it or they're struggling with that or they're not feeling it, there may be some of these things going on behind the scenes that we can understand so that we can address them and, and make it through some of these limitations first. So first one, hypotonia. Um, this is a, a muscular thing. Uh, if you had a baby with Down syndrome, you know, they're kind of floppy. It, and it really is misunderstood a lot that uh, it doesn't actually impact our strength, right? Individuals with Down syndrome, individuals with hypotonia can be incredibly strong. Uh, just go look at Special Olympics weightlifting and you will see. Um, it's not actually about the strength, but the brain's ability to activate muscle fibers. So it's just a little bit harder for individuals with Down syndrome to learn how to, you know, get their muscles firing and active. So it takes a little bit longer for them to learn new movement patterns and different things. So, um, you know, when you're working on a new exercise or something like that, if they're like, ah, oh, this is hard, it feels hard, this may be part of the puzzle and it just takes a little bit more time. So be patient knowing that that is um, a part of the, the process there. Um, foot stability and joint pain. This is a big one. You know, uh, a lot of people with down syndrome have flat feet because of the hypotonia it affects their joints and so if, if the foot is flattened out you know the foot bone connects to the shin bone and the knee bone and the hip bone and the back and the shoulder and it really can cause a lot of um, discomfort in their body even just standing up and walking so making sure that you've got proper shoes and support for their feet some people need um, you know SMOs or orthotics or something to get that foot in alignment so that that doesn't feel so uncomfortable when they get up and moving. Um, some some of us have airway issues and heart issues, breathing it can be limited. So endurance can be really tough. And, and some people just complain because what's maybe easy for somebody can be more difficult for individuals with, um, with breathing or heart conditions. Um, coordination and balance. This is another one, this vestibular thing in our brain. It, it really impacts regular activities like riding bikes or skating or climbing or being able to move quickly. 
Um, but this is one that improves so fast with practice. And I love seeing this. So um, again, kind of with the hypotonia, just understand that it's not that they can't do it. It just doesn't come as naturally and they may need extra time and support to get into that. So keep that in mind. Hypothyroidism is another big one that impacts energy and motivation and weight gain to have on your radar. Um, if, if there's just chronic, chronic fatigue and they're, you know, struggling with energy, definitely check that out because if that's underlying, it will be truly impossible to get, get them up and motivated because their body is working against them. Um, and then the last one is this family lifestyle, right? If, if your family is not an active family and, you know, doesn't really get out and do much or you talk about exercise and you're like, oh, I have to go and exercise today. And there's, you know, that that's not a part of your family culture. This is something that has to shift because it normalizes for our loved ones with Down syndrome that exercise is not miserable. It's something fun that we can do. We can do it together. And um, so just knowing that that can take a little bit longer if they come from a family that also is inactive. Okay, so we see these, we just acknowledge these. And I wanted to throw that out there so that you can maybe check some of those boxes if you're seeing some of that in your loved one. But here's the thing that's going to make this really fun is we work with the strengths right? We know that individuals with Down syndrome really have a lot of strength and a lot of things um, that we can use to make this fun. And this is just like any, any other type of learning that you would do for someone with Down syndrome is you use their strengths to help them improve in the areas where they might be struggling. So we're gonna start by now looking at the strengths and then how we can use those to make fitness fun and something that is not a battle. So what are the strengths? Socializing, right? We know that uh, there's just this extra love chromosome in our kids. They love being around people and this is something that we can use to help motivate and keep fitness really fun. Um, music, right? How many of you have uh, dance parties, right? <laughs> like we just we love, love music. So we can use that as a tool. Um, play and curiosity and games. These are the strengths, right? Really motivated by these things. And, and visual input. You know, if you've ever done something like a visual schedule or used, you know, a visual communication board, the, the visual receptors are so much stronger than some of the other. And so we can use that to make fitness more interesting and fun. And, and then this intrinsic motivation, right? Um, for a lot of us, back to where I started with, with the idea of exercise being about weight loss. When we think about exercise, not all of us, but for a lot of us, we're thinking about um, our body image or our body shape and how we look and, and physique and all that. Um, for the most part, again, these are kind of blanket statements, but for the most part, um, our loved ones with Down syndrome, like this isn't so much on their radar. You know, they are, they are motivated by feeling good um, this internal motivation, they're, they're motivated by feeling confident, by feeling proud, um, by being, you know, praised for the effort that they do. So when, when we look at making this fun, we work with that intrinsic motivation to do good that lives inside of every single one of us and especially um, our loved ones with Down syndrome. So these are the strengths and this is where this is where we get fun. So I'm going to give you tonight six ideas to help you get started and looking through maybe how you've approached fitness and um, help you rethink how you can make this more fun so that exercise is not uh, an evil word <laughs> anymore. So number one, always, always, always do it together. This idea of together with fitness and individuals with Down syndrome is everything. These aren't really ranked in order of importance um, as we go through this presentation, but if I could put one of them as absolutely number one, this would be the number one. Um, this social aspect that, that this is a community uh, for them. 
So some ideas, if they need to get out and walk, walking with a friend where they can talk or, or have that social time with somebody, um, being a part of a team, a group that is doing the same thing as them is going to significantly e increase their motivation and enjoyment to show up and be there again and again and again. Uh, this could be going swimming with the family or working with a trainer that's going to be right there by their side the whole time to help make it fun and interesting and support them. Group classes are amazing if you're looking at um, fitness. You know, I've been in gyms for a very long time and I've had a lot of individuals with Down syndrome that have come through my classes, whether it's dance or, or yoga or step aerobics or, you know, Pilates, whatever it is. And they just do really well in a social environment. Um, and this can be virtual too. Now we're in an age where there's lots of virtual communities and classes that are available. Uh, generally the face-to-face -face is gonna be a lot more fun, but um, virtual is a really good option. So think through that when you're thinking about getting them involved in something, who are they gonna do it with? How is How are you gonna bring that together and that community in for them? Because it will change everything and Raise your hand if you're the same way, right? Like how much fun do you have doing things together with other people? So it's just that much more with our loved ones with Down syndrome. All right, so always do it together. Number two, add music to the mix. I cannot stress how much this changes things, especially because music has the ability to change our mood, all of us. But when you have somebody that's really... Um, uh, more, I'm trying to think how I can say this properly, um, maybe less in the thinking brain and more in the emotion brain, music comes in and it changes the mood and the atmosphere instantly. So if they're going out to, to walk or do something, make a playlist of songs that they love to listen to and, and have them work with you on this for what they'll listen to. And when they put that in, you're naturally going to just see more fun and dance, 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 dance dance your heart out. Dance parties are one of the greatest ways to just bring more natural movement in. Um, and then all of the music based practices that are out there, there's classes like Zumba. Uh, this picture is a, is a pound class. I don't know if you've seen this one, you get drumsticks and you basically just rock out and <laughs> bang on the floor or bang on a yoga ball. And it is so, so fun. It's great exercise. Um, water aerobics classes are another lovely one where you could be in the water and taking some of the pressure off the joints, but moving to the beat, there's, um, there's aqua Zumba you can find. And then all of our music-based things like dance and ballet and gymnastics and cheer or hip hop classes. Um, these are fabulous ways to make fitness fun. And just remember that music is motivation. So if you're struggling with somebody who is unmotivated, try adding some music in. It will make a difference. I've taught group exercise for 20 years, and this is the single greatest factor in our general population that, that changes um, what people are willing to do and how they feel motivated. And one of the things I've had to learn is um, how to create like these master playlists that take people out of their bad day or right now I'm teaching at like 5 15 a.m. every day and nobody feels like exercising at 5 15 a.m. but you put some good music in there and it shifts people out of sleepy head into okay let's do this so very powerful tool to make fitness fun all right so we're going to do it together we're going to add some music number three gamify it Movement, exercise can be play, right? It can be a game. And the more it feels like a game, um, the, the less it feels like work, even if we're working really, really hard. So we can make exercise interesting by turning it into some type of game or challenge or, or contest. There's lots of different ways I've done this uh, throughout the years um, that you can create or use dice and, you know, if you turn it into a game, you roll the dice, 
Um, you can make dice that have different types of exercises on it. And, you know, you roll five. OK, five minutes. We're going to do this or you've got five push ups. Um, mystery box. Love this one. You just create a box. You put different exercises inside or something and then they draw it out. And that's the exercise that they're going to do. Um, it sounds very small, but this can truly change everything because all of a sudden it's exciting. It's a game. Um, a phrase that works really well in, you know, if you're just trying to get out and do something like, oh, I wonder if you can, I wonder if you can run uh, over there or if, if we're trying to jump. I wonder if you can touch that brick that's up there if we're trying to get them to jump. Um, if we're going down, you know, I wonder if you can you can push all the way up off the floor. I wonder if you can do 10 push-ups. And that way it's not it's not work, it's a challenge. This is much more interesting. <laughs> so that's a great phrase. And of course, also, there are exercise games like We Fit or um, you know, sports games. This goes without saying, but um, when you bring the game into this, it will increase motivation. It's fun and makes it feel less like work. I love this picture here of the, the hula hoop obstacle course. Obstacle courses have always been a part of what I love doing with my kids for fitness um, and just creating like different challenges for them and seeing like, hey, I wonder if you can do this and, um, and, and making that a part of the play that we do. This comes a little bit more naturally when we have younger kids um, and it's no less effective as, as our kids get older and become teenagers or adults as well. You just have to think, think outside the box a little bit sometimes. All right, so we're going to do it together. We're going to add some music. We're going to gamify it and make it visual, right? This is one of the strengths of, of our kids is this visual. So um, this comes out in a lot of different ways. You know, if, if you're trying to get them to do something um, or be a part of something, uh, making movement, if you have a visual schedule, a part of that, that daily visual schedule, if they have something after school or in the morning or part of their routine, make it visual so they see it. Um, if you're doing some type of exercise, at visual, like physical targets work really well. Um, it can be a little bit vague if you're if you're asking somebody to um, go out and go for a walk. This is why I really hate treadmills, because you don't have any like awareness of progress visually. Um, and if you want to make exercise really unfun, <laughs> use the treadmill because <laughs> there's nothing. Um, but if you're out, if you have a walking track or something and say, OK, we're going to we're going to walk down to that road. Or we're going to walk all the way around this track two times and use some type of landmark or, or physical target works really well. Um, we have different types of like um, cones and like exercise dots and things uh, that we use in our in our training just to help them like reach for something or what this uh, young lady is doing here in this picture. This is in a yoga class and a lot of um, a lot of our kids with Down syndrome struggle to extend through the back. The, the posture muscles can get really weak over time. And so learning to pick the head up and then the breath control. So this is an awesome exercise, right? We could say, hey, I want you to lift your head up and blow. And that's like, ugh. like, hey, here's a cotton ball and a straw. I wonder how far you can make this cotton ball roll. <laughs> And then, you know, you blow it and then, oh, that was a pretty good one. I'm going to put a marker here. I wonder if you can get it any further than that. And um, and just making it visual so they can see somehow what they're working on. And progress trackers or, or exercise trackers can also be really great where they can see um, what they have done. So this might be if you're working on, okay, we're going to try to do, um, you know, movement every single day for, I don't know, 10 minutes or whatever your first goal is, create a chart, somehow it could be a sticker chart, or, you know, they can color it in or whatever, so that they can see 
and, and visually keep track of their own movement. This is really motivating. And if you want to put a reward on it, that's fine. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, though, because of, like I said, that intrinsic motivation that's there. Like just being like, hey, look at that. We, we went out and we walked five days in a row. Great job. High five. That's really just as motivating as saying like, hey, if you do this for five days, I'm going to get you fill in the blank. Right. Um, and progress tracking as well. You know, if if you're working on a specific type of exercise, like um, like walking distance or um, getting stronger with like push ups or something like that, maybe the first time they do this, they do one push up. Cool. OK, next time, let's see if we can get to two and, and marking out and making some type of progress tracker so they can see and visually see the progress that they're making. Really motivating. And it just makes it more fun. Number five had to bring this guy up. Nick, he's got this shirt on. It's one percent better. And this is. Um, this is Nick Nikik. I can never say his last name right. But uh, first individual with Down syndrome to complete an Ironman, which for any human being is an absolute uh, beast of an accomplishment. But the way that he got there, what he talks about when he talks about fitness as an individual with Down syndrome is he started where he was and he said, OK, every day I'm going to be one percent better. Right. And this is so important. Celebrating all of those small wins along the way. This makes it really fun and really engaging and really motivating when we see and celebrate the small wins along the way. And, you know, my, my son is quite young, so this is all very relevant uh, for me. Like when we were doing physical therapy to try to get him to where he was standing up and walking, like we did this, right? <laughs> it was okay, you got one foot, um, you know, the first step was being able to stand up and balance. And that first time he balanced without holding on to anything, it was like a party. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't like, oh, man, he didn't walk. Come on. Come on, you're supposed to be walking by now. You know, like that, that first little shuffle step, like we celebrated every single milestone along the way. And so this is still incredibly important when we are looking at um, fitness, whether it's, uh, you know, with training or sports or whatever it is that you're going to choose to do, is setting these micro goals that you can reach really quickly. So maybe the first time you go out to walk, instead of, you know, focusing on the fact that, okay, well, the CDC says that we need to be walking or doing 150 minutes of cardio every week, we better get out and, you know, walk 30 minutes tonight, that might not actually be attainable right at first. So five minutes. Awesome. Great job. Celebrate it. High fives. Next day, six minutes, seven minutes. And you just slowly and steadily add to that load for them so that um, so it's not overwhelming. And focus on that element of consistency instead of intensity. This feels more fun when it is um, it is small baby steps than focusing on that big goal. Now, for some of us, this is this is different because we we might do really well focusing on like a long term goal. Um, but for for our loved ones with Down syndrome, bringing it down, celebrating the wins, high fives, fist bumps all around for a very little thing goes a long way. And I, I have to put this out there. Um, so important. Praise the effort and not actually the outcomes. And this is where we can really go wrong um, in in working with our kids, especially, you know, if if there are weight loss goals, going back to that idea at the very beginning, um, sometimes we can you know, look at, oh, you lost five pounds. Awesome job. So proud of you. Or um, that doesn't actually build uh, that intrinsic motivation that we were talking about. So praising the effort. Um, wow, you got out there and, and you just you just ran for the first time, like down the street. 
that was really hard. I am so proud of you for working that hard. Um, or, you know, if we're doing strength training or sports, um, focusing on the effort. Wow, you really tried hard to swing that bat and hit that ball. Good job. Let's keep trying. And this helps to build that confidence and that internal um, sense of fun and success that comes with sports, with fitness, and is going to keep them wanting to go back again and again versus just some type of um, outcome that they accomplished. All right. And then the last one that is one of my favorites is get out, <laughs> get outside. Um, there is so much research coming out nowadays about being outdoors and what this does for our brain and our mood. Um, nature improves our mood. We just feel better and, and have more fun and enjoy being outside. Um, vitamin D, getting out in the sunshine, it increases our energy, it increases our, our mood, our immune system. There's so many good things. So when possible, think about how can we get outside and explore by foot or boat or wheels or horses or whatever it looks like um, to just be outside and, and move around in the great outdoors. This is in our DNA, right, for all of us, um, but especially with individuals with Down syndrome, especially if they are older, um, it gets harder to, to be outside and, and have the freedom to do that. So prioritizing this is going to make so much difference in their enjoyment. Um, and we just naturally want to move when we're outside, whether it's hiking. Um, this this guy, I can't remember his name, but oh my goodness, um, climbed to the summit of, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm forgetting this. Somebody in the comments, let me know if you know what this is. <laughs> Grand Tetons, somewhere in the US, uh, just did this massive climb to uh, to the top, did it with his family, did it with help and support and just what an amazing accomplishment. Um, and the destination really changes the journey. So like I said before, trying to walk on a treadmill or you know do something where you're just sedentary, like having a destination or somewhere that you're trying to go can really help with that motivation and the fun of it, exploring. And there's something that's really powerful about changing location, right? Um, if, if they have a habit of being at home and being on their device or watching TV, to all of a sudden turn the living room into a fitness space is really tough because mentally they've got the habit of, oh, I'm at home, this is where I get to relax and watch TV and play on my device. So changing locations, whether you're going outside or going to any of these amazing places that we're going to hear about around the city um, that have programs or you're just going to a gym, this really helps to shift out of I'm sitting and relaxing and doing this to, okay, it's time to get up, get moving and have some fun. All right. I'm going to leave you with one final quote before we hear from um, everybody else that has some amazing things to share with you that in the end, this is really what it comes down to when we look at fitness and our loved ones with Down syndrome. If you believe it will work out, you're going to see the opportunities that are out there. But if you believe it won't, you will see the obstacles. So when we think about this and we think about making fitness fun and finding ways and opportunities to keep our loved ones with Down syndrome active and healthy, look for the opportunities. They are out there. And if you believe that it's possible for them, they will do it. I'm 100% confident in that. I've seen it again and again and again. And you can empower your loved one by believing that they can do it. Um, and finding those opportunities for them and being that advocate in this space for them. So I am going to um, transition now and introduce some amazing people around the community that are offering programs around Memphis that you can get involved in. And I'm going to start, let's see, 
Um, we've got Julia on from Special Strong. So I'm going to bring her up because we had a couple people that haven't been able to jump in yet. We'll see if they can come in with us. Julia, are you there and ready to come up and talk to us? Okay, you just need to unmute and then you will be good. There we go. Hit that a couple of times. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good to see y'all. Um, thanks, Megan, for having us on. Um, my business partner um, is out of the country and was going to join us and they've had some storms. So he's having some web access issues. But um, his name is Marco Popovich. And Marco and I um, started Special Strong um, this spring, brought it to Memphis, Tennessee. And Special Strong is an adaptive fitness business that um, provides uh, training, personal training, um, both private, semi-private, um, and group classes, aquatics, um, just a host of um, really opportunities to provide individuals with um, access to be able to do these super exciting things that Megan has spoken about. Um, and so we are happy to interact, um, especially um, uh, my, I have a son who is 15 and um, he has Down syndrome and definitely an inspiration for me to um, be a part of Special Strong and look to bring Special Strong to Memphis uh, because I wanted him to be able to have better access to what um, exciting things are out there. Um, and so in order to do that, quite honestly, um, you know, each of these people, whether the gentleman with uh, training for the Ironman um, or climbing a mountain, um, you um, have to start somewhere and, and you have to start really with where you're at, but um, you've got to train for things like that. Those things don't just happen. So um, ultimately, we um, want individuals with special needs um, and exceptionalities. Um, we work with um, those who uh, want better access to things. We work with those who like from a functional standpoint, um, they need more strength to be able to transition from their wheelchair to the car. Um, we work with individuals who um, may just want functionality within their home, better functionality within their home. Um, and then of course, something that, um, you know, a lot of people do do mention are interested in is um, just health and um, weight loss in general. Um, so uh, we uh, both Marco and I are um, special education teachers. Um, and so we um, it's ultimately if you're familiar with um, an IEP, which I think most everybody is um, that's a part of this, um, we provide um, individualized instruction within the fitness realm um, so that um, it's personalized. Um, we meet, um, we have an initial um, visit with the client and or caregivers and family parents. Um, look at the goals for the individual um whatever they may be, may be like i've said with weight loss or functionality or a particular goal or sport that they want to participate in and they just can't quite um, reach uh, the goals that they've they've wanted to attain so we'll work with them individually in designing a plan um, that um, you know meets those needs and and gets them to those places where um, they want to reach those goals so um, that is overall who we are. Um, we're excited to be in Memphis and um, Special Strong is originally based out of Dallas, Texas and is spreading across the country. And so we are honored and excited to be here in the Memphis area. Um, we are in several different gyms currently. Um, and so essentially, um, you know, people can reach out to us on our website um, or a phone call, um, and I'm thinking, uh, Megan, that you're providing those contact information pieces. Um, yes, so we will have a report. Awesome, 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 awesome. So we, 
uh, you're welcome to reach out to us there and we offer a free seven day pass for anybody um, who would like to just kind of talk to us and try it out and we do an initial eval um, and then um, kind of let them experience um, the fun of special strong and I totally um, second and third and fourth what Megan has said a huge part of getting individuals with exceptionalities involved um, in any type of fitness is making it fun so that's a huge part of who we are at special strong is is making those um, whether it's group fitness or personalized training making those um, uh, weekly events fun and engaging and personalized. So you can check us out on our website. Um, and like I said, we'll do a seven day pass and um, then connect individuals with a trainer um, and go from there. So that's who we are at Special Strong. Thanks, Megan. Awesome, Julia. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, yeah, it really is so valuable to have that one on time. We talked about getting connected and um, it's just amazing the progress that individuals can make when they have that customized one-on-one -on -one attention um, with, with a trainer. So it is so exciting that this is available in here in Memphis and can't wait to uh, see more about what you guys, what you guys do and the lives that you change. So thank you so much. All right. So my name is um, Elizabeth Sykes and um, I own We Rock the Spectrum Kids Gym here in Memphis and now in Jackson. Um, we opened our Memphis location a little over a year ago and we just opened our Jackson location probably about four months ago. Yes, four months ago. Um, so it is an all-inclusive gym that's committed to providing a safe, nurturing and fun environment to foster learning and safe experience, a uh, sensory experiences. So it is an all, a, a sensory gym for all kids, all abilities, um, but it is geared for children with special abilities. Um, and that's all special abilities. Um, but a few things that we do provide in the gym is we provide open play. Um, open play is just a drop in play where parents do come and assist and play with their kiddos. Um, we are open from nine to six, Monday through Saturday, um, Sundays, 12 to five weekends, very weekends, very based on, um, birthday parties, but we update all of that on social media. Um, we provide respite up to three hours. Um, so that is if you want one-on-one -on -one or if it's up to four kiddos at a time, and that is ratio based on the child and staff as well. Um, we actually do that quite often. We have a lot of families call that need to drop um, off a kiddo for an hour or two, um, a lot up to three hours, need to run errands, have a meeting they need to go to. Um, so we do offer that. Um, then we offer, we do parents night out. We do those once a month um, on Saturday, Fridays, five to eight. We provide pizza and juice. They get to play. We do fun events or like themes, so like we've had a glow party, we've had a dance party, we've had a pajama party, like we've had lots of themes, the kiddos love it, we actually have our next one this Friday, um, and then we host birthday parties, and we also host field trips for schools, um, since school's starting back, we will have a lot of schools, we've had like, in sh last year we had most surrounding counties in Shelby County, like all of, most of the school districts attend a field trip. Um, and it was most of the pre-K or the inclusion classrooms that came. They absolutely loved it. It's fun to see the parents still get to come and play and interact. Um, but our gym has a lot of different sensory items, a lot of different gross motor, fine motor equipment. Um, we have a zip line. We have trampolines. We, with have, her. Since we had this summer, we had keto kinetics come in. They came in every other week and they did a class like they did a ninja kinetics class. They did a let's jump class. Um, and they taught children like how to like jump rope. And we did like, um, they had all kinds of different activities set up. Then they also used the equipment in the gym as well. Um, then we also had special Olympics, uh, last year who came in and they did their class as well. Um, so we have lots of different events, lots of classes that we set up. We always post all this on social media. Um, we send out emails. 
Um, we've done one event with the Down Syndrome Association of Memphis already, and we have another one coming up tomorrow. Um, and then in my Jackson gym, we have Elijah from uh, the Ninja Warrior show. He's coming in to actually teach like a Ninja Warrior workshop in October. Um, so okay. we're always, always kind of, you know, trying to find different events and um, fun stuff to do, especially if it helps with gross motor skills, um, especially with our kiddos and loved ones with um, Down syndrome, because that's one of the main things, our main goal, especially in our family uh, for Tinley is gross motor. We're always trying to find something for her to do to keep her moving and keeping going. Absolutely. So, so great. Thank you so much for sharing about that. Yeah. And we've, we've just really enjoyed that. And um, the atmosphere there very much just encourages creative play and movement in my camera is falling everywhere. This is just the best night ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, and that's the kind of thing that when we look at making fitness fun, it's, we're not necessarily working in that scenario on fitness goals. It's just open play where it can become a game and it can be creative and it, it's play-based movement, which um, especially for the young ones, I'm curious, do you guys have an age limit for who can come in there and play or is it, is it open? Um, for our children with special abilities? It's all ages. Okay. Um, all ages can come in. I mean, it went at least once a week, we have two kids, two adults that come in that are 18 and 20 and they absolutely cool. love it. Love it. So yeah. Um, all ages yeah. for special abilities. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for sharing about what you're doing at We Rock the Spectrum. We're so lucky to have you in our community and thanks for being here tonight. Yes. And I wanted to talk one, just a few minutes about the cheer team. Um, yes. Yes. So that does not happen at the gym, but I actually help coach this. Um, it is a cheer abilities team that we do at Memphis Elite, which is in Arlington. Um, it is a cheer abilities cheer team. It is an all-star team. So they actually get to go compete. They wear uniforms. Everything is free of charge. So everything is um, paid for by the nonprofit or we do fundraisers to raise for that. Um, we just did our first season last year. It went really well. Um, the kiddos actually loved every second of it. I remember after their competition last year, one of the one of the uh, little girls looked at me and she was like, all of my dreams have come true. Um, and it was oh so <laughs> uh, We practice once a week. Uh, we This year we're going to have multiple competitions, um, but it's fun. It's not an actual competition. They're not going to compete against other teams. We haven't got that far yet. Um, but it's really just getting out there and they get to perform, they get to do their dance um, and they get to perform it in front of everybody. We do big, um, we did have like a big Christmas party last year for them. We have a big event. So um, we also do that as well. You can contact me if that's anything that you're interested in. The season usually goes from, um, we've already started the summer, just like doing little practices. Um, we practice once a week on Fridays and it's usually until April. Um, okay. and then we're kind of in and out there as well. Fabulous. And is there an age range for that as well? No, yeah, all ages. Cool. All ages. Um, and we have, we have like seven or eight on our team now. It is um, a mixture. We have some kiddos with down syndrome. We also have kiddos with, um, autism. Um, it's fun. We have, we have, um, one boy on our team right now. We had another interested, so we're going to see if he's going to come on with us. Um, but yeah. It's real fun. And you can always come and like do like a trial class and like watch his practice and kind of see how it goes to see if that's something that you're interested in doing. That's great. I love that. Yeah. And like we talked about the, the intrinsic motivation really comes out when there's a performance that's involved, right? Well, we see this in like sports events or like in special Olympics competitions, yeah. the, you know, dance cheer performances. So it, it gives us that end goal, right? Like we're not just dancing just to dance. We're working towards something. We have that, that moment where we get to shine. So it's really special. Love that. All right. Thank you. So awesome. much. well, Hey everybody. My name is Katie Carter. I am with the Ninja gym. We are a brand new, um, company in, uh, Collierville. We're located right off of UF 72. Um, where the old friends building is. If you guys know where that is, we bought that building and have transformed it into something that looks just like the set of American Ninja Warriors. So 
Um, we are a kids ninja gym. And so um, if you have seen the show Ninja Warrior, we truly like our, the inside of our facility looks just like that. Um, we've got the big trussing, we've got the obstacles, we've got the rock wall, the warped walls, um, just a little bit of everything for kiddos to come in to play. And so we were started as um, kind of an outpouring of the owner of uh, the Ninja Gym also owns a, a fitness gym in town called NBS. And just as the gym got older and started having children and um, we realized there's a need to provide some fun activities for kiddos to do. And at the same time, just had a lot of kiddos want to climb on everything. <laughs> and <Yeah>. so <laughs> the idea of the Ninja Gym was born. Um, and so really our mission is to help youth of all ages uh, all ages, abilities, levels, skills, um, everything to help them develop a love of fitness and uh, the discipline and determination to overcome obstacles, um, both very tangibly on the obstacle course, um, but more so it's very important to us that those skills transfer over into their everyday life. So learning the determination when something is hard, um, practicing having maybe failed at an obstacle and learning the discipline to try and try again until we can um, improve on it. Uh, that transferring to life when something's hard in, uh, in their everyday life, knowing um, having you know the grit and discipline that they've learned in the gym applied to that as well. So um, we are new, so we are a new facility. We just opened last month. Um, and so we currently provide all types of activities for kiddos, with camps, classes, birthday parties, you name it. Um, and we also provide a wide array of programs and a program that we have are, are working to get started is something called Ninja Abilities. And so Ninja Abilities uh, was birthed out of uh, our mobile ninja course. So we've got a course that we take around to different schools. And so if your kiddo is in a Germantown school or a Collierville school, it might have come to their school this spring. Um, but it is something that we take to the different schools and kids all get to use it and play and do the obstacles. And so um, we found that uh, when we were taking it to schools, we had a lot of inclusion classes coming and the kiddos with very diverse needs getting to play on the equipment and having just such a great time uh, yeah. and realize like this is something we can absolutely provide to kiddos with diverse abilities once their indoor facility opens. Um, and yeah. so that's kind of where the idea was birthed. And so we're working to get a fall program started. Um, and what that will look like, there'll be 45 minute classes um, and they will, uh, there will be a very small ratio of instructors to, um, to students, just so we can make sure we can provide um, the, the right amount of support um, for each individual in the program uh, with the very diverse needs. Um, and individuals will get to learn um, through the sport of ninja is obstacle training. Um, and so that is a great way to develop coordination, core strength, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, core strength, <laughs> coordination, uh, balance, uh, stability, um, a lot of things that uh, apply to everyday life, right? And really um, can transfer over into functional skills. Uh, and the cool thing about a, a gym with a bunch of <laughs> equipment where like the goal is to run and to climb on is like kids love it and it doesn't feel like exercise. And so right. um, talking about that intrinsic motivation that you mentioned, um, as kiddos get to see this stuff and really are internally like they see the warped wall and they're like, I have to do this. <laughs> and, you know, yes. and we practice and we practice and we practice and really get to cheer that kiddo on um, to see, you know, to reach their end goal with whatever it is. And so, so, yeah, it is. Um, it's been a huge blessing to get to see kiddos set goals and finally and, and to reach them. And they have that moment where their eyes light up and did you see that? <laughs> um, and it's just hugely rewarding. And so we're excited to be able to start a program. Um, to be able to serve some other friends in our community who might not have, um, or who, uh, just to serve other friends in our community, just to make it very accessible to everybody. Um, and so, yeah, so that's a little bit about us. Um, I would love to answer any questions that anyone has or um, would like to know more about. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, if you guys have questions, feel free to go in and talk about that. And I was so excited to see you guys come along and especially that mission, because, um, you know, we talked about like setting small and measurable goals. And I found yeah. through, through that type of play-based fun, um, yes. you can, yeah, you can see, you know, if it's monkey bars or swing in like to the next obstacle course, like I went one further and that mm -hmm. idea is, um, is so important, especially with our kids who, or individuals that can get frustrated and lose that confidence. So learning mm -hmm. to find internal confidence is, is so yeah. good. So such an awesome value. 
valuable skill. All right. All right. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be on here. So a lot of you might be familiar with Special Olympics that we do um, sports training, Olympic types uh, sports throughout the year, but we have um, started uh, doing more than just um, the sports training. We, our youngest athletes now are two years old. We have our young athletes program that's from two to seven, where we work with them on motor skills, basic sports skills, um, help them with their social and learning skills. Uh, four years ago, or actually three and a half years ago, we started cooking classes and also virtual workouts that we do. We have our Fit for Life program where it's run by personal trainers, where we do uh, personal training group workouts. We talk about nutrition. Um, we talk about mental health and strong minds. Uh, we do a fitness, uh, we have a fitness tracker app, which will help um, your um, child keep up with like how much water they've drank for the day or learning about what foods to eat, what foods not to eat and put it in the tracker. Um, we have our Road Warriors program where it's our running walking where we meet once a week and um, we walk up to three miles. Uh, we do have some athletes that um, will run and then we have some that walk and we have a volunteer um, paired up with every athlete. Um, so we do have that. We still have our swimming and our basketball and our powerlifting and um, volleyball. So we're still offering all our other sports. But now we're our youngest age is two and our oldest right now is 73. Um, so we're really focusing more on the health and nutrition side now and getting active and building your strength and um, really learning about uh, nutrition and mental health. All our classes that we offer are at no charge to uh, the athletes or their um, parents. Uh, we do allow siblings to come uh, with um, the athletes. Um, and we do have a lot of volunteers that come in and participate with us as well. That is fabulous. I love that. And I love that focus on, um, on strength. That's a really... Mm -hmm much needed area and something that uh, individuals with Down syndrome really excel at. <laughs> yeah. And we, and COVID kind of helped us start with the virtual classes. So we took uh, July and um, we'll start back mid August where you can actually do those at home and we'll give you a zoom link and everyone logs in and we teach the class and we do a workout um, which is a lot of fun. And then we have our cooking classes and we'll do those twice a month. And then also we'll play bingo once a month because it's kind of fun to give them something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. That virtual option is, is really fabulous. We talked mm -hmm. a little bit there about like, if it's possible, get out of your space because it really helps with the mental shift, but um, to right. be able to know somebody's on the other end and we're doing this together, even though I'm here, that that often goes a lot better than like, putting a video on and asking them to like exercise to a YouTube video because there's not that interactive component. So I love that. I love that you guys are making that available and giving that, um, that group group access still. And our fit for life program, we meet on Sundays um, from four to five or four to five 30. And we would love to have anyone come out. That's great. And where's the best place to, uh, for people to go to find or like it register for they program? Can go to our, our website, which is stolenpicsmemmy.org, and also your phone to my uh, cell number if you correctly. I'll be happy to answer questions. Okay, that's great. I cut out just a little bit. We'll get all those resources. Did anybody here have any questions for Lisa about the Special Olympics programs? Lisa, did you talk about the camps in the summertime? Um, oh, yeah. Summertime? We just finished. Thanks. 
<laughs> Thanks, Lori. Yeah, we just, I'm probably brain dead from that. <laughs> we just finished our summer camp. We, uh, last week, uh, we had a summer camp where they're dropped off um, at 8.30 in the morning and picked up at 5.30. It's a week long. We're possibly going to try to do two weeks next year, um, but we used Immaculate Conception on Central as our location, um, and it's more um, learning and activities we do we did we learned about also nutrition so it's not sports related um so there's a lot of activity going on where they'll do some crafts but we have a theme every day where you'll learn about what we're talking about this year was all about the 1980s so we learned about every year of the 80s and they had um little trivia sheets to do as a team and it's a lot of fun so and that's uh, also offered Fabulous. That's great. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much, Lisa, for taking some time. Love that you guys are here in the community. And uh, we're good. Yes. Okay. Um, so the YMCA uh, of Memphis in the Mid-South, we have 11 locations around um, around the Memphis area. And the YMCA is such a fab fabulous place to come and access uh, different programs for individuals with Down syndrome, for the whole family. Um, and what I love about the YMCA and have appreciated is how much they value inclusion. And um, as a, you know, as a gym and a fitness center, it is also a community center. And um, this year, especially we have really put an emphasis on how can we make sure that we, uh, make our programs and support the whole community, uh, regardless of ability and, and background and have that. So at the YMCA, um, with the membership, you have access to unlimited, uh, fitness classes. The, the wellness floor is wonderful. There are free, um, wellness consultations that are available and people that can, can show you how that goes. Lots of different ways to get involved in things like pickleball and um, different activity-based things. But one of my favorites, especially for um, our friends with Down syndrome, is our aquatics programs. And we've had a lot of people ask about swim lessons. And part of our mission at the YMCA is safety around water and making sure that um, swim lessons and you know, being able to function and be in the water safely is accessible to everybody in the community. So uh, we do offer swim lessons. Uh, we have indoor, outdoor pools at different locations. And um, right now with the summer, there is, you know, open swim a lot of time, but you can also get involved in small group lessons. And we have private swim lessons that are available as well. Um, and all the memberships and different programs, um, we have, you um, uh, income-based fees so that we can make this accessible to everybody, regardless of where you are. And we are working right now on trying to get a special membership rate, um, for the Down Syndrome Association all set up so that if you go and say that you're a part of this, um, you will be able to access that without enrollment fee and, and all of that. So I will let that, let you guys know as soon as that is all, uh, finalized and set up, but, um, knowing that, the, the water is a fabulous place for having fun and um, whether you're swimming or jumping or splashing or playing, um, it really is a great place to create um, fun. And I found that a lot of our friends with Down syndrome really enjoy being in the water more because of um, the anti-gravity that goes on in there, uh, that it's often a lot easier to access fitness there. So we do have classes like aqua Zumba and um, water fitness and aerobics. It's set to music and it's fun. And uh, we do have individuals with um, different abil abilities who are in those classes. So those are open to anybody. Or uh, like I said, you can, um, with Special Strong coming into the YMCA, uh, hopefully find some, some specialized adaptive classes really soon. 
Um, so if you haven't yet, definitely check out your, your local YMCA because it is a fabulous community. Um, camps are available. They're coming to an end right now through the summer, but there's lots of different programs. Um, we do also offer Parents Night Out that is fabulous. We have um, one person that is uh, within our, our Y Play and Child Care Services. Um, there's a director of inclusion. So with our young ones and individuals with Down syndrome or additional needs. Um, there's somebody that's there helping train and support uh, our kiddos there. My son has been a part of uh, the YMCA summer camp all summer and really thrived there, had a lot of support. Um, actually, one of his paraprofessionals from his elementary school happened to be one of the camp counselors and they kind of moved people around to make sure that um, people who have the most experience there are available um, when our kiddos come into the, the program. So um, can't recommend the YMCA enough if you are looking for a place where your whole family can go and access programs. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm so glad you were able to make it tonight. Um, so I'm with 901 Gym Stars and a couple months ago, I started doing free parents night outs for the kiddos with Down syndrome and just general special needs because I've noticed that they don't have a lot of places to go with that. So I wanted to be one of the places that they do have. Um, we do parents night out right now for free on a couple Saturdays. And I'm looking into right now getting a gymnastics class started for them. But with USAG, there's just some hoops that I have to jump through. So that's going to take a little bit longer. And um, what else? We, I just, whenever I do Paris and I, I just try and make sure that everything is active and moving and organized and just fun so they can play. <laughs> Absolutely. How did you get interested in uh, supporting individuals with Down syndrome? So my mom is actually a SLP and I've just always been around kids who have special needs and there was this one kid that I remember specifically who just had a little harder time so I just connected with him a lot more than normal kids and I just wanted to do something with area. that's awesome that's awesome well we really appreciate it um my kids have also been uh, a part of 901 Gym Stars. That's how I got to know Eliza and her programs. And it's fabulous. It's a huge space. There's all kinds of fun equipment. And um, they just, they love being able to be out there. And there's lots of helpers that are there the times that we've come who are making sure that they're using the equipment safely and, and working towards um, learning new skills if they want to. And that's fun. And then how about with um, the regular gymnastics programs and the, the classes that are there. How does that look as far as somebody coming in that has no experience and isn't really sure about and wants to try gymnastics? Yeah, so whenever we, there is someone new, we just try to make sure that they feel welcomed and just supported throughout the entire process of learning gymnastics. And um, I'm looking for classes right now to do with kiddos in the Down syndrome community, but with USAG, the program that we're in, there's just a bunch of hoops that we have to jump through. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but I can't wait to get those started up as well. Yeah. Very cool. And then are your groups and your gymnastics program based by age or is it levels or a little bit of both? So it's age and skill level. We have preschool all the way up to like 16 years old and um, there it's different levels and different skill levels and our ratios are normally eight to 10 as well. Eight to 10 to one coach. Awesome. That is so exciting. Um, well, thank you so much for taking the time to be here, Eliza. Um, There's any, so we appreciate you guys taking the time to be here tonight. And, um, as as you move forward from watching this presentation, sometimes the hardest step in all of this is getting started on something 
new. So the encouragement that I will leave you with as we wrap things up is uh, remember that this is a process for all of us, whether we have an extra chromosome or not. And um, so being patient and recognizing that we try different things, we explore different things, we take it slow and steady and know that this is a lifetime journey of figuring out how we can make movement and fitness fun for, for wherever um, your loved one with Down syndrome is on their journey. So just choose one thing that you'll start with. Start with that just one idea, try it out, give it, give it some time um, and patience and take it one step at a time because that's truly the way that it's going to go for all of us in a journey for starting something new. So thanks again for everybody being here tonight for the Making Fitness Fun presentation. If you have any questions, I'll hang out for a little bit um, so we can we can talk. And if you're watching this on a recording and you have questions, please email us at the Down Syndrome Association because we would love to support you on helping your loved one find fitness and find fun for their health. Thank you guys so much for presenting tonight. If you want to hang out, if you have any questions, you can. Otherwise, you're free to log off.